Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a early impression video and it's actually on a very expensive uh, Bodicea the Victorious fragrance, which I'm just going to do a reapplication because why the hell not? Um, I've got a couple hour dry down here. Actually going on three hours now and I'm going to do a fresh application here, but one of my perfume god people very kindly sent this to me. Actually, if you go um, to maybe my most recent live stream, um, I think the person that sent it left a comment kind of towards the end asking if I've had a chance to go through this and I just mentioned, hey, I've got so many samples, I'll kind of get to it when I get to it. And that is true. There are so many other fragrances on the back burner. When I do one of these, that means everything else waits. But um, I have had a chance to test this three times now, and this is nearly the $2,000 for a 100 mil bottle, which is uh, of um, Bodicea the Victorious Nebulous. So very kind little uh, gift that he sent my way. And um, so here's the thing. While I'm reapplying this, um, here's the thing about the house. Um, so Bodicea the Victorious is a house in general that I am not impressed with, okay? So there's the little dab, and it's just a house that has not impressed me overall, okay? I've done a live stream where um, we discussed probably five different fragrances, I believe. None of those were full bottle worthy to me. Um, and the fragrance that I actually came to love from the house is a um, fragrance that was, um, it'll come to me in just a second. It's a name, I, I don't really like the name either. It's intricate, intricate is what it was called, okay? Intricate's my favorite uh, Bodicea the Victorious, hands down, no question asked. If you said, Ramsey, you can have one bottle of Bodicea the Victorious, it would be intricate. Even though intricate's like 500 bucks or something and this is almost like two grand, I would take intricate all day over uh, nebulous. Now, the issue with Intricate, and, and it came, uh, the only reason I got a chance to smell it is Armando built me a blind sniff kind of package. You can go back and watch my old blind sniffs if you would like. There's eight of them on the channel now. And so one of them was built by Armando. Well, a couple of them were built by Armando, but one of them had this Nebulous in it. And I thought, man, I love the fragrance, you know? Uh, it's, it's aggressive and animalic and challenging and everything in the opening. Okay, in the opening. The problem was, of course, in a blind sniff, that's all you're smelling is the opening and, and, and um, the first 10, 15 minutes on your skin or whatever it is. The dry down was such an uninspired effort that I was like, this is just a house that's not for me. You know, especially at these kind of price points, no way I'm going to spend my hard earned money on a, a fragrance house like Bodicea the Victorious. Very uninspired dry downs. And I smelled it over and over and over again. Okay. Um, and so what ended up happening is it felt like the brand was kind of one of those brands that put all of their time and effort into that first couple hours on your skin and then they just didn't pay attention to the dry downs, okay? So due to that fact, you know, I've had some experience with the brand. Um, now we come to Nebulous, okay? Oh, I do have one full review on, on the house as well called Nemer. Um, and that was another one that basically suffered from what I would diagnose is the same issue uh, in, in how I described Intricate. I liked the first couple hours. The dry down was, was very uninspired, okay? So according to my nose, I would say it was lackadaisical dry downs on this house, right? So let me read you the blurb on um, Nebulous. According to the Bodicea of the, Victoria, the Victorious website, they have three highlighted notes on their website. Their website's not very good, by the way. They have uh, three highlighted notes. One is rose, one is oud, one is amber. Okay, those are the three that are highlighted. Here's the little kind of blurb. A dark and brooding creation full of rare and extravagant ingredients that promise to awaken the libido and stir the soul. An opulent and sensual scent with the underlying feeling of innate exclusivity, a sense of excitement of the anticipation and things to come, ominous but arousing. You cannot choose the 100 mil bottle size because um, it's not available on the website. I don't know if it's just sold out, temporary, unavailable, discontinued. I have no idea what's going on, but you can't select it. But if you actually just look on, if you just search Bodicea the Victorious Nebulous, you'll see Scent Splits has it for something like $1,800 or something. Okay, so it's not a cheap fragrance. Two grand or $1,800 or $1,600 or $1,400, whatever it is, it's expensive. Okay, so... They continue with the fragrance story. 
Here is the true zenith of Perfumer's art. Nebulous, a dark and brooding creation which uses only rare and extravagant ingredients to reawaken the libido and stir the soul. So apparently rose, amber, and oud are extravagant. Um, and, well, the price is extravagant, I'll tell you that. But here's the rest of the fragrance story. Bursting with anticipation, indefinable, iconic, imperious, the zenith of the perfumer's art, a dark and brooding presence set to reawaken the libido and stir the soul, Capture, capturing the frisian, the frisian, that Bodicea herself would surely have felt before going into battle. Nebulous uses only rare and extravagant ingredients to tantalize and torment before the inevitable moment of capture. God, I wish that was true. A haze of enigmatic rose and saffron meld with the potency of oud and the delicacy of violet, amber, and musk intertwine to add an air of smoldering intent. That is the blurb, okay? So, um, all that being said, uh, this is where nebulous you expect to be something extraordinary amazing all the things they say i mean two thousand dollars almost for a bottle you should be blown away your hair should just be pulled back from your face like you're you know uh going 500 miles an hour and the wind's just blowing against your face um uh, it, it 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 isn't okay especially not in the opening in fact i flat out dislike the opening okay the opening is one of my least favorite parts of the fragrance which is strange because this is the first Bodicea the Victorious that I think I've just, that I've come across where I just don't like the opening. And it's not because it's too challenging or animalic or anything like that. Um, it's not that it, that at all. In fact, if it was, I would probably give it a pass, to be honest with you. Um, but because there is this, here's the opening that gets me. There is this very strange, sugary, sweet, rainbow smell. That's kind of the best way I can describe it. There's this rainbow smell of colors, this kaleidoscope of strange colors. Like, uh, think of the candy nerds, you know, uh, but in image form. Or, you know, um, one of the best ways I can describe it uh, is like, imagine like granular sugar in, in your hands or on your fingers. And imagine marshmallow peeps. You know those little peeps that you um, sort of uh, get or you can buy around Easter time and they're covered in sugar, all right? And, and the peeps have that sort of marshmallowy softness to it. Now, I have no clue why they did this to the opening of the fragrance. I have some theories. My first theory is that they didn't want to offend anyone from their audience right away. They didn't want it to be this big, explosive, animalic, challenging oud opening, okay? Which, when I think of, you know, people who would buy Bodicea the Victorious, they're usually not the same folks who are buying the Ariz La Dorés, which, again... This was, I don't know, what, 20% uh, of the price uh, for 30 mils. And I would take this all day, every day, um, twice on Sundays, Oud Taiwan. I mean, these type of Aris Ladores just blow the Bodicea and the Victorious fragrances out of the water. They're, you know, the, the artisanal brands like Ensar Oud or, or something like that. My guess is the folks who have dived that deep into the Oud game are not then spending $1,800 on Bodicea the Victorious uh, Nebulous. That's that's my guess, okay? So, um, since I think Bodicea the Victorious knows that their fragrances are being purchased by the Zerzhov and Roja crowd and stuff like that, that they maybe tried to soften the intro a little bit, okay? Um, they wanted to give folks a little bit of a protection, right? They wanted to give them some shoulder pads and knee pads and a helmet kind of thing. Um, and so... I think for the folks who were not used to sniffing fragrances that had larger percentages of oud, like oud Taiwan had 30% real um, Taiwanese oud. Um, and so I would be very surprised, honestly, if there was 30% in nebulous of oud, but I don't know. Uh, and I don't even know if Bodicea the Victorious uses real oud or not. I would certainly hope so for two stacks almost. I certainly hope they use real oud. But I, I don't know. I would refer you to whatever the brand says. If the brand says they use real oud, go with it, okay? Um, you know, I looked on their page. I didn't see anything that said, we use real oud. Here's the percentage. Nothing like that. Just that um, poorly written blurb, in my opinion. Um, but for two stacks, God, I, I certainly hope that they um, use real oud. And so that's that's kind of my first 
thought as to why you get this weird sugary, marshmallowy, ambery thing in the opening. You get a little bit of vinegar, you get a little bit of oud, but it's protected, okay? That's kind of the way it smells to me. It's protected by this kaleidoscope of colors and um, sugary, ambery feel, feel okay? Um, like padding, you know, like the elbow pad I mentioned earlier, the padding. Now, um, my other hypothesis is that artistically, they tried to get very artsy-fartsy with the way that this was supposed to progress, and they just went straight off of the deep end. Um, and so... I think that I could totally see them being in this room, trying to be artistic and going, well, what is a nebulous? Well, legally, uh, or not legally, but the uh, dictionary definition of nebulous is kind of something hazy or vague or undefined, right? So imagine like an ill-defined concept. And then if you think of a nebula, which uh, in Latin basically means cloud or fog, for example, um, a nebula is a dis distinct, luminescent part of interstellar medium which can consist of ionized natural or molecular hydrogen and also cosmic dust. Think of the sugary, dusty bit I mentioned earlier. Nebulas are star-forming regions. So if you Google pictures of nebulas um, and just look at the amazing colors, which space pictures are always amazing and beautiful, it's basically like a star nursery, okay? So if you can take those colors, the blues, the hues of pink and reds and these bright, you know, shining stars in the background, looks like you just punched holes in the black blackness of space and just lay it directly on my imagery in the opening of these rainbow colored sugary peeps, okay? And just visualize yourself holding the peep and squeezing it and that soft marshmallow texture, okay? Just, you know, leaving little microscopic bits, you know, um, of dust, dustings of sugar on, on your hand afterwards, okay? That's the image of the opening. That's how the opening feels to me. And, and, and it kind of, um, unfortunately, stays like that for the first 15 minutes or so. There is this um, slight ghosting, you get this slight ghostly feel of, of vinegar, okay? Um, which some ouds can give off this like cord wood vinegary feel and you do get a little bit of that in the background But it's padded. Okay. It's like putting the boy in the bubble and sending him out, right? He's in the bubble. He's safe. He's he's bubble wrapped, right? And unfortunately that opening lasts for a little while it doesn't just hit you right away and then dissipate it lasts 15 minutes give or take um, and and I think it's just part of the fragrance DNA even three hours or so in, um, it still has that sort of, you know, pudgy, ambery, um, you know, sort of protection to it here. It does turn slightly spicier as it dries down, strangely enough, but, but, but it does. And um, I, so let's just say between 15 and, 30, 15 and 30 minutes in, that's when the rest of the fragrance really kind of starts to to come out in play if we stick with the nebula metaphor that's where kind of a, let's say a new star is born something new for you to smell so 15 to 30 minutes in um, what ends up happening at least on my skin is it seems like more of the smokier elements of the oud begin to slowly get teased out very very slowly um, and they start to come more to the forefront okay so that you know ambery um, kaleidoscope you know, think of the nerds, the candy, the nerds with all the different colors. Um, that's still there. It doesn't go away, but it recedes, right? It, it recedes sort of in the background. And you get to smell more of the oud accord. And this is my favorite part of the fragrance, to be honest with you, because instantly the way that the oud accord is done reminds me of Dawn. Now, I reviewed Frederick Mall's Dawn two months ago, two or three months ago, somewhere around there. And what's crazy is they're both around the same price, which uh, surprisingly, in that video when I reviewed Dawn, 100 mils of Dawn was $1,950. Two, three months later, it's now $1,990 on the Frederick Mall website. I guess they figured if you're going to drop two grand, who's going to notice 40 bucks, right? Um, and, and it's crazy how perfume prices are going up now. You know, to be fair, this is an extreme example. There's very few people who are going to drop two G's on a perfume. Um, but 
I found that very fascinating that in two months the price has changed, unless I just wrote it down wrong in my review, but that was $1,950 when I did my review. I have my notes. Um, so, uh, I'm not 100% sure about the pricing of Bodice of the Victorious Nebulous, since again, 100 mils is out of stock and it won't actually let me click on it to, you know, see what the MSRP would be. But someone told me it was around two, two Gs. You've got the scent split $1,800 bottle or so on there. Um, so the price is very similar, but to me, Dawn wipes the floor with Nebulous. It's not even close. Dawn is superior in every single way. And if you watched my review of Dawn, you know that I reviewed it off of a decant. And so it would be no competition for me. If I was going to get a bottle of one, I would take Dawn 100 times out of a hundred. But to be fair, um, you have to give credit where credit is due. Dawn came out in 2018. Nebulous came out in 2017. I thought it was going to be the other way around. Actually, I figured Dawn came out, then Nebulous came out. Actually, that is the second time something like this has happened because um, something happened very similar with Erosia that I reviewed called Oh, the Exclusive Parfum. It reminded me a little bit of The Moon, and I figured the Erosia was copying the Frederick Mall. But it was, it, well, I wouldn't say Frederick Mall was copying it, but. Um, I would say you could see definitely an inspiration that the Roja surprisingly came first. Now that one's discontinued, but I do have a review of it on the channel. And I like diving into this, this I guess you could call it like the ultra high-end niche realm because it's very prohibitive to get your nose on stuff like this. It's very hard to do so. No one's just going to blind buy it unless you're, you know, a shake of a country or something. I don't know, you're prince of a country and you have just unbelievable amounts of dough or you're a trust fund baby or something. Most people are not just going to blind buy a $2,000 fragrance. So I like doing these type of reviews to put my thoughts out there. I don't know if Odyssey of the Victorious does free bottles to folks. I have no idea. Um, and I'm not saying it's a, I'm not saying that Nebulous or Dawn is a clone of one or the other. Um, because I'm just saying that they start to remind, there are some similarities as to how the Oud Accord has been executed. And what's interesting is in Dawn, which I've had that decan in my collection for something like four years, okay? So I've given it a fair amount of wear over the years and I've basically used it all. I only have like a couple mils left, okay, of, of Dawn. Um, and what's interesting is the first time I smelled Dawn, and even when I did the review, I knew through and through Dawn is a frankincense based scent. They talk about this huge amount of oud in Dawn and all of that stuff. Um, but the oud is there mostly at the beginning, and then you get so much more of this frankincense, you know, growl, this smoke, this um, um, church like smoke with um, Dawn. Imagine like the combustion of the sun, right? Constant, constantly com combusting. Um, the sun works pretty much just like a hydrogen bomb explosion, right? Just imagine this huge amount of energy being released. And that's a lot of the frankincense and the smoke and resins and all that stuff. Nebulous doesn't even have frankincense, okay, as a note listing. Well, here, let me read you the note listing, um, the full note listing, according to Parfumo. So they say that Nebulous is rose and saffron in the top, oud and violet in the heart, musk and amber in the base, Okay. So that is the um, very inspired and extraordinary note listing, according to Bodice of the Victorious. Um, now, the issue that I have with this, okay, is it's not that I think it's a bad fragrance per se, although I do think it's a bad fragrance for the price. I think you should be completely and totally put on your ass for two grand, okay? Um, your head should be spinning. Uh, and really the biggest issue with this is that everything that I like about the two scents that have similarity, Dawn and, and Nebulous, Dawn does better, okay? Like for example, the amazing frankincense and the smokiness. You get a little bit of smokiness here in Nebula, but it feels like, it feels like it's coming from a little bit of the oud, you know, whereas Dawn uses frankincense to give you much more of that spiritual feel, you know? The other thing is that the oud in Dawn is much more funky. You get way more of that vinegary, like cord wood, blue cheese feeling. And, you know, blue cheese, of course, is kind of moldy cheese. Um, and so, obviously, there's definitely this moldy wood feeling that you could totally see the link to that. So, having a blue cheese aspect to it makes more makes sense. But in Dawn, it's much more funky. And I like the funkiness. I like the fact that, you know, Dawn is a little bit more challenging. 
both ouds give off, Dawn and um, Nebulous, give off a little bit of this vinegar vibe, which can come across as smelling a little bit acidic on your skin. But in Nebulous, it's much more plastic smelling in a way. Um, it almost feels like you're smelling like the plastic parts of the elbow pads I was telling you about. There's the soft parts and there's the plasticky parts. Um, and there is this feeling of this being like a version of Dawn, but with like the training wheels on, okay? And who knows? I mean, maybe Carlos Benayim is the perfumer of Nebulous. I, I have no idea. Bodicea the Victorious doesn't make their perfumers public, so I have no clue who created this. Which, honestly, for a niche house in 2024, especially one that charges as much as Bodicea the Victorious, that is just, to me, unforgivable. Um, I think they should definitely disclose who their perfumers are. It's 2024. I mean, you know, um, I'm going to throw this thing, which... Um, Again, I think they I think they should. So we have no clue who the perfumer is, but it smells like this could be a softer, more gentle, more cuddly and likable version of Dawn. It really does feel like it could be a brief of, of what Dawn ended up becoming. Um, so I discussed this idea of sort of nebula earlier. And just imagine these young nurseries of stars. And, you know, what do you do in a nursery? You make sure the kids are safe. You look after them. This fragrance has this definite feeling of being protected, sheltered, if you will. So, whereas Dawn, it's almost like the, the kid is allowed to roam free because they're more mature. Um, and that's how it feels both in the composition, the way it's put together, the materials. And, you know, I know this isn't a comparison video with Dawn, but it's very hard to, to discuss something like this without giving you kind of context. And that's the context that I'm coming from. So now, again, if you gave me a bottle of this, I would wear it, okay? I like this type of perfumery. I like rose ouds. I like, I'm just a fan of rose ouds. I always have been, I always will be. Ouds have really been my thing as of late, but I've been getting into the hardcore artisanal ouds. Um, you know, Taha's House, um, Rising Phoenix. There's so many amazing ouds that, that I've discussed on the channel. Um, and, and so if you gave me this, I would wear it. There are parts of it that are nice. The rose is nice. Um, the soft, delicate, powdery touches of the violet is nice. Interestingly enough, um, if you watch my review of Dawn, I mentioned there is this purple little touch, like irisy touch here and there that isn't listed. And so these, these, these fragrances have more in common than you would expect, but most folks who would pay this type of money for an oud fragrance, they want to be blown away, you know? They want to be blown away by the power of the oud. Uh, and you just don't get that sort of amplification that blows you away. It's very restrained. It's very, very, very restrained. Um, I think, like I said, if you gave me a bottle, I would wear it. Would I pay retail? Hell no. Absolutely, positively not. Would I pay half price? No. Would I pay 25%? No. Would I pay 10%? No, I don't think I, I don't think I'd pay $180 for this. Um, would I pay $100? Eh, maybe, maybe I'd pay $100. Um, the problem I have is this fragrance doesn't move me, you know? Um, while I'm wearing it, I constantly think of how weak it is, you know? It's, 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 the fragrance feels limp. It feels lacking. It feels, um, like it has all the ingredients there, um, but it doesn't have that combustible feeling that excites me. So while I like oud and I and and the oud in here is okay. Um, I wish it were, were amped up more, of course. Um, I mean, I wish it were way amped up more. It needs to be way amped up. I like the rose, I like the violet, the saffron thing is okay. Um, but I don't like the way the cuddly amberiness just kind of protects and tries to shield everything. And what's interesting is Bodicea, the prefix of it, but Bodhi literally translates to victory or win. And obviously she was brave. I mean, she was killed by the Romans for leading this uprising and then hailed as a hero for basically being brave enough to say, I would rather fight as a slave than, or fight and die as a slave or die as a free person than live as a slave. I'll get it right eventually. But that type of intestinal fortitude should be captured in their fragrances. You know, that's that's just my opinion. I think you should capture that type of inten intensity um, and fiery braveness. And, um, you know, when you when you wear this, uh, you like I said, you do pick up little bits here and there where you get a little bit of like hope. Like you're like, OK, I think I'm picking up some more of the spices. 
and then you realize that it's just kind of settling into a very boring sort of, yes, you get a hint of oud, but mostly this white musky ambery thing deep into the dry down. The oud is still there, but it's an uninspired oud. Um, every single time that I wear this, the word that comes to mind is disappointing. Now, again, I've only worn it three times and every time to bed, so I'm not getting into eight hour dry down, but it doesn't smell like it even has the legs to have an eight hour dry down. It smells very restrained. Very, very restrained. Um, you know, could this be a good first oud fragrance for somebody? I mean, maybe, but you can get something um, from Ajmal for 30 bucks that does this better even, in my opinion. So to me, this is a big fail, big disappointing fail. Um, and still my number one bow to say of the victorious is intricate. If you said you can have one, I would go for intricate because that's more my style but I don't like the dry down. So it's kind of one of those deals where you would basically just have to reapply every two or three hours. Um, and for the price these go for, that is a tough selling point that you have to just reapply it because the dry, everything should be perfect when the perfumes are priced like this. The other thing is that's crazy is if you just go to Parfumo and pull up Bodice of the Victorious and click on their fragrances in the last decade, they put out like a hundred fragrances. I'm not exaggerating over a hundred maybe. And, um, so that, you know, if they're so rare and exclusive, how are you just pumping out one after the other, after the other, after the other? It's, I mean, I'm sure the guy is making hella money, uh, off of, off of the brand, but I, in order for someone like me to get interested in, in something like this, they would really have to up their game. And I just don't see them taking that next step, for my opinion, my two cents. But if you've tried Nebulous, I would love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear if your thoughts align with mine. Thank you to my perfume god person who sent this my way. Otherwise, these type of reviews would never happen because I don't own any from the brand. And I like kind of going everywhere. That's one of the kind of staples of my channel is that I will talk about anything uh, and give you my two cents on it, good, bad, or indifferent. And so I'd love to hear your thoughts, though. Let me know what you think. As always, thanks for watching, commenting, liking, subscribing. Love you guys. Catch you next time. Cheers. Bye-bye.